Hi, Amy here, and um, with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings, I'm gonna do a little color blending today, and I had posted a picture of um, on my Facebook page, basically saying, playing around with blending, and it was for this piece right here, which you can kind of you can see the subtle light. It kind of looks like it's reflecting some light. It kind of softens the gray. And um, a few of you, Evelyn, and a few other people had requested me to do a tutorial. I was gonna do a live, and uh, I'm so much more comfortable with the YouTube thing than doing the Facebook live, so I'm gonna do uh, a YouTube video for it. So, and this is the piece that I have not done yet. This is a piece that I have done. Let me bring you in here to show you this piece real quick. Okay. There you go. As you can see, it's a little bit lighter on the front of the doors here, and you can see a little bit of lightness through the center. Um, I have not put a top coat on this. It will have some sheen to it as soon as I get a top coat on it. Um, I'm gonna be putting a coat of gator hide on it. These, this hardware, I'll insert a before picture. Okay, so this hardware, this hardware used to be gold. And now, I mean, it looks nice, doesn't it? Look, at, I love this hardware. These little toggles. It used to be gold. I took um, Rust-Oleum metallic paint to them. It was a, just a quick fix uh, because I didn't want to drill new holes. I loved these little handles here. Um, but you can see there's also a gap, a gap here. And I'm going to get rid of that, not in today's video, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to get rid of that. This is just a piece of um, baseboard, it's flat on the back, a little bit rounded on the front. It's nice and thin, so it's easy to cut. I'm actually going to be putting, I'll paint this of course, I'm going to nail this to the back just so it comes out a little bit. I'm going to nail it to the back of this door here and I'll paint it so it matches so that when I shut the doors you will see the gray. You will not see a gap any longer. So I am going to fix that gap. Oh, look at the inside. I did the inside, it's got dust in it. I have not top coated it yet, but it's got dust in it. But I did the inside with the pop of like amethyst purple. And I also did the sides of the drawers. I didn't do the inside of the drawers, I just did the sides. But I painted the inside a little pop of color. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to doing some blending. Like I said, this is subtle. You see a lot of people doing like the Bunker Hill Blue with the mermaid, uh, mermaid tail. Um, or the ocean with the golf. You'll, you see people using bold colors for doing the color blending. I just wanted to give this a, a little bit of character uh, and soften it up a little bit with the details. Uh, Cause this is a small nightstand. And so I just wanted to soften it up and give it a little bit of sheen. This would actually be really good too with um, some type of uh, opulent top coat to, you know, to give it kind of a, a shimmer, but I'm not gonna do that because it'll limit my market. So I'm just going to be putting gator height on top so it has a nice sheen, it's nice and durable, and so, but this one is done. So let's jump over to the one that has not been done. First thing I'm gonna be doing is the, the light color that I was uh, blending was um, Dixie Belle Fluff. I don't usually use these, I usually use a FIFO bottle. I ran out of FIFO bottles, so I had to run to the grocery store and got one of these. These are not as durable as a FIFO bottle, but they still work. And I didn't have much of my fluff left. So, um, got some fluff here. I got my two, and they're getting stained. I've been using them so much this week. That purple actually stained the top of my paint brushes. <laughs> and, um, and I had some blue that I was doing with this, and the blue also stained. So they are clean, they're wet right now. Always test them on your hands to make sure that no color comes off and so that I don't have any bleed, color bleeding onto these, but no, they're clean. They just don't look like they're clean. These are my Klingon S50s, my favorite brush. I bought, I bought them off the Dixie Belle site and I think I saw them on there again. The S50s are hard to come by and usually when people get them in, they're sold out. I just saw on the Facebook page. Today is um, Tuesday the 10th or 11th of April and um, I did see that they had some of the S50s on their site. Okay, I just shake it up. The other color I'm using is, and the color that's on here right now, is um, it's Manatee Gray by Dixie Belle. And I love this color, it's so versatile. I'll use this as a base coat for a lot of projects. So, first thing we need to do, oh, 
and I have my little misting bottle. I switched to these. I saw a lot of ladies using them. This gives a constant mist. Uh, it's like a mister of water instead of doing the spray bottle, which squirts, you know, larger water drops all over your piece. This, look at this. See, it just, it's like a mist. And I got this at um, a hair, uh, the hair salon supply store, Sally's, and um, I, think, I believe it was like $11 but well worth it. Okay, let's get started. Start off with the Manatee Gray. If I can get it open. This is why I use FIFO bottles. Okay. If you can't get your bottles open, turn them upside down and smack them on the ground. That loosens up the paint chips underneath here and then you're able to open them. Such a beautiful color. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how this works on the front and side. I might show you a side too, but it's basically the same concept. I'm going to start with this top drawer. First thing I'm going to do is, um, just to let you know, and the slick stick. Then I did two coats of the Manatee Gray. And then I put one layer of Dixie Belle's uh, top coat in satin on it. Because with doing the blending, I just wanted to have you know a nice solid color that stays here. Um, and I thought I was going to do a whitewash is what I originally thought I was going to do as a whitewash And so I wanted to do a top coat so that my whitewash would move and not stick into because chalk paint is, is kind of porous And so if you didn't seal in between and you did your whitewash your paint would Not move as freely. It'll still look nice But it's just easier to work with when you have a top coat as a barrier So I do have a, a one layer of top coat underneath here. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get it. Okay, I'm going to start with this top drawer. Pull it out a little bit. And now I'm going to leave it in. I'm going to leave it in because I'm not painting the inside of the drawers. I don't want it to get paint in there. And I leave my drawers on. Um, you know, most times people paint, they take their drawers out. It, well, if you're doing a solid color, yes. But since I'm doing blending, I want to make sure that, you know, everything runs smoothly. So I need to have the drawers in to be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and mist it, get it nice and wet. Okay, and I'm going to put one coat of the gray on. I want to have one wet coat of gray to do the blending. Okay, so I've got one coat of the gray. I probably put a little bit too much water on here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my, my fluff, squirt some on my plate, don't need much of it. Just putting a little on my brush, and I'll put it in the center. So you see that? And you can make your, your highlighting area as big as you want, and then just blend it out. And my surface is nice and wet. And I got to make sure I'm doing it the same as my other one. So I kind of went made this a little too big. I have my other nightstand next to me so I can refer to it. So I'm going to make my white a little bit smaller. Now, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So I got my white in the center. That's where my highlighting is going to be. And then I'll come back with the gray around the outside. Let's see. The gray around the outside is very subtle. This is just going to give the dresser a little bit of a soft feel to it because the colors are not that far apart. But I want it, I want it to look like light is reflecting off of it. So I'm keeping my dark gray around the outsides, smoothing it out. And then I got my white in the center. I got way too much water on here. Okay. So I got my white in the center, but that's such a straight line. You don't want to have such a straight line. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth softly. I'm, I'm barely holding onto my brush. I'm just letting my brush just gently glide over it till I can get the lines to disappear. So, uh, Cause I don't want it to be a harsh, like right here. That's a little bit harsh right there. And right there, that's a little bit harsh right there. I don't want a straight line. I, don't, I want it to be blended out. So you're just going to keep running back and forth. 
getting my edges because I want the gray. And then going through the center. And I'm using my gray paintbrush. It doesn't have any paint on it left, but I'm using my gray paintbrush just because I'm trying to lighten up the white a little bit. Okay, and if your line is, is not going away, now in person, it doesn't look as sharp of a straight line as it does on the camera. I can see this. But if you want to blend it, I'm gonna play for a little bit. If you wanna blend it a little bit more, go the opposite direction, which will kind of feather out the lines. The hair, dog hair. Okay, but I don't wanna, I can leave it like that but since my other dresser, I, my brush strokes on my other dresser are going this way. So if I leave this in the light, you can see very faintly that the brush strokes are going this way. And I need to make sure that both nightstands match. So I do need to go back over this and drag very gently with, with my brush, just barely holding on to my brush. And what I'm doing is I'm I don't want it, if I overblend, it's just gonna become one giant color. And once you start pulling paint, that means it's starting to get too dry. If it starts pulling paint, then you just squirt it with a little bit of water, get it wet again, and then you won't have the drag marks. You don't want the drag marks in this technique. And I've got drag marks up here at the top. Just little miss squirts. That just keeps you from having the brush strokes. Even if you weren't doing color blending and you're on your second coat and you want, you don't want brush strokes to be in your paint, you want a nice airbrushed look, mist it with some water and it'll take out your brush strokes. At least with the Dixie Belle paint, I found that I don't have hardly any brush strokes if I mix it with water. Okay, so you can see it's got a little bit, of, okay, zoom out. So, I mean, it still looks like a straight line on camera, but if I change the camera angle. It matches that one over there. See that's just a subtle whiteness through the center. It looks like light is reflecting off of it. That's what this one's going to be when it dries. Okay, now for the doors, these are, very, see, see how small they are? They're smaller than my hand. I just want a subtle bit of white here because it's just, it's just bland. So I want a subtle, bit, a subtle little bit of white here. And then um, I'm gonna do the bottom lip of the, the front, which I'll show you in a minute. That kind of also adds that little bit of sheen. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. These aren't as noticeable as the rest. Actually, I want to do my whole door. Okay, get started off with my wet coat of gray. I'll zoom down a little bit. This is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do just a center highlight of white just in the center here so it looks like light is reflecting off of it. But for right now, I'm just gonna do the doors. I'm just doing this because I have water that got down there. I know. Okay, so I got. I don't have to be particularly very neat with putting this coat on, the wet coat, because I'm gonna be blending anyway. I just need to make sure that I have a coat of gray throughout my surface so that my paint will move and blend. Okay, now for the white. My white is gonna be subtle on this door. I just want it to look like light is reflecting off of the door. It's gonna be very subtle. 
So you can see over there how dark it is over there. And now I've lightened it up with the white in the center. This doesn't take much work because this is already a square. It's already got borders. So, and I don't want the white around the outside. I just want it in the center. Just to make those the centers look like light is reflecting off of them. Okay. Let's see, I got some, as it's drying, I got some gray. There we go. I'm just adding some white back on there because I had a streak of gray, which I didn't want, a strong streak. There we go. Okay, so you can see that. We'll do the same thing here. Do my gray around the outside. Like I said, you can use much bolder colors so that your your highlighting center areas are like very noticeable, very pronounced. This, I'm just doing two colors that are fairly close, which is the Manatee Gray, which is a, a definite gray, and then Fluff, which is Dixie Belle's white. It's not a bright white. They're bright white, I believe it's called cotton. Um, but it's a cross between cotton and drop cloth. So it's almost white. I use it as a white and it, it's pretty darn white, but it's not as white as the cotton. I believe it's called cotton. I just always just buy the fluff, drop cloth, and sandbar. Those are my three white tan family paints that I love of theirs. Okay, so I've got one coat of the gray on. And then, ooh, that's dry. Did I not miss that? Okay, did I switch my brush? Now I'm getting to the point where I'm mixing my brushes too much. It doesn't matter which brush you use for the blending, but when you're doing your solid coat of gray, you kind of want to stick with the same brush because you got a lot of gray on that brush. Okay, so now I add my white. So you can see that. And I'm just going to feather it through. The water makes this easy. If you try to do this dry, it's just, I mean, it's gonna look like dry brushing. You're gonna have streaks and, and bristle marks, but with the water, it's like airbrushing. It looks like airbrushing. Okay. Once again, barely holding on to my brush, just letting my brush do the work. I'm trying to get the brown streaks out of there. Not brown, gray, sorry. Okay, and then I'll go around the border with the gray so I can get the white out of there. Okay, so when that, this is already starting to dry. And so see how much it fades? but there's still just a subtle bit of white. I might have to, when it dries, I might have to add some more white because my other dresser looks a little bit more white. So we'll see. Okay, now for the highlighting down here at the center. I'm gonna miss it. Sorry if I missed it once. I have got to keep my brushes separate. White, okay. Okay, so I missed it. I'm gonna put a coat of gray on, all the way across. See, and the nice thing about this is I, I can go back after this dries and repeat this process. So if I have an area that's not white enough or is too white, I can fix it after it's dried, just remist it and start again. Get some white paint. And now what I'm gonna do here, is I'm just gonna hit the center. I want, like I said, I just want this to look like light is reflecting. So right off the center, I'm adding white paint from the center and just pushing it out. And the paint will get thinner as you push it out. Okay, so let me zoom in.
Okay. So I have the white in the center. And then just feather it in from the outside with the gray. Oops, I forgot to put the white down there. See that white right along this arch down here and add some more white to the center and just push it out. And then come in from the outside with my gray because I want that white to stay in just the center. Spudded it in. It's hard to keep track as to which brush is my white and which one's my gray. So sometimes I might accidentally grab my white brush and paint where gray is supposed to be, so I just gotta pay attention to that. Okay. Okay, I take my white brush and I'm just going to make sure I got all the brush strokes out of here. And I don't want any water drips, so I gotta get in little cracks and crevices. Feather it out. And if I see any like stark, definite start and stop marks, I'm taking my gray brush and I'm just gonna pull it out. Okay. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. So I see, you can see that little shimmer of white in the center and there'll be white on the doors and when it dries, it's gonna look like light is hitting it. It softens it up. Okay, now next. So I did the middle bottom, the two doors in the center, and then I did the center of the drawer. Okay. I'm turn this around. Hopefully my wheels are gonna work. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do now the side. Okay, and same thing. Missed my surface. Figure out which brush is gray, which one's white. Okay. Put a thin layer of gray. And now, here, since I'm working with such a big surface, I am gonna just put the gray around all the sides in a big box. Kind of like in my last videos when I did blending, I make a big box of my darker color or my you know my main color which is the gray just gonna make a big box so that I have a wet surface a color to work with now I'm gonna add my fluff my white in the center I know, it looks scary. Just wanna get it on there. And then we'll start blending. Okay, so now we have just a square box. You can pick, like I said, pick whichever brush you wanna use for your blending. I'm using my gray. Make sure it's wet. And now we're going to drag the white up and down to blend it out. I don't want it, I don't want a harsh square line. So So I'm going to go back and forth like this to spread the white out. See that? And then back up and down. I'm trying to get rid of the harsh the harsh color break between the gray and the white. But I do want the white centered to the middle. So it looks like light is reflecting off of the dresser or the nightstand. Just 
go lightly up and down with your brush, just blending out the transition between the two colors. Come up from the bottom. Do the same for the top, because you'll get your brush marks where you've started, you start and you stop. You'll get that jagged ed edge up there. Okay. I'm just gonna go up and down very gently with my brush, blending it out. And then wherever I see that it's not blending very well, I just go back in the opposite direction. And if it starts to get dry, I will mist it again. Okay. So if you keep going in one direction, all you're doing is moving your paint up or down. But if you go across this way, you're spreading it out. And it also gives you a little haziness on the sides. And it's starting to dry. All right. Okay. And now blend it out. If you start finding that your, your, your center color has come out to the edges too far, you didn't want it that far, just go back. Like I could go back with my gray and then just put more gray on the outside with my gray paintbrush. I don't have a lot of water on the outside. Okay. And I just keep going like this until I feel I have it blended the way I want. Make sure I don't have any brush strokes so that I can have that nice airbrushed look. A little dry right there. Okay, so when this dries, you're gonna be able to see just a little bit of lighter color in the center once again, making it look like light is reflecting off of your dresser. It kind of gives it that airbrush look once it dries. And there. I had some pull marks from the bottom. So that's how I'm doing the sides, and this will dry, I mean, nice and nice and cloudy, if that, that, that makes sense. Now I gotta do the same to my bottoms I did before, where I just want the center from here to here to have that center part. I, I want a little bit of highlight of white, because I want it to look, look like, once again, light is reflecting off of it. Okay. Get some gray on the outsides. So we got some wet paint to work with. Let's see if that didn't get wet over there. And the nice thing about this, you don't have to be scared of doing color blending because, I mean, it's so easy to correct. You just get it wet, take your paintbrush right back over it if you don't like it. Keep doing it, keep getting it wet, keep adding more paint until you get it the way you want. So I'm gonna add the white in the center. See that? Okay, see how I got that nice little spot of white right here in the center? And I'm gonna feather it from the center out. Just working my way out, making it bigger and bigger. So I don't have any brush strokes, there we go. Get the underneath, want some white there, and I want some white here. See the white underneath? And then I'll pull it through with some gray. Put more gray on here and just pull it out. Just, just feathering that white out. I'm using the gray 
because one, I don't want it, the whole side to be white. I'm using the gray um, to blend out the edges. And then I will just kind of smooth it out so I don't see it start and stop. Okay, see that? You can see how from right here to right there, it's white. So it looks, looks like light is reflecting off of it when it dries. Like I said, it's just gonna give it a little bit of sheen. Okay. Should I do the top? Okay, let's do the top. Okay, hopefully my shadow is not gonna affect it. Um, I want you to be able to see the screen. So let's do the top. I'm gonna spray it with water. Start off with my gray. I do, I didn't really get that much water on there, did I? Okay, there we go. See the difference that makes? Put gray on here. I just want a little bit of white in the center. I suppose I should have dusted that first. All right. Okay, so get the gray around the outside and then add the white to the middle. See, I've got the white just the center. I know it's kind of an odd angle. Let's spread this out. I wish I can get taller. I'm trying to keep my shadow out of it. Do it from this way. Okay, now I'm gonna take my gray brush and just run back and forth, spreading that white out. Okay, and then now I'm gonna go opposite. Okay, now I'm gonna go this way. Get out of the mosquito. See, feathering it the opposite direction kind of just softens the edges. And if it starts to feel dry or pulling, missed it. And go back to my gray brush and just keep going back and forth. I might have to add more white to the center. See how that just, you can see my brush marks over here, so I need to get rid of those. So this dry over there. These misting bottles are nice, but they, they, just, they disperse the water evenly, but they don't, it's not as heavy of a stream as my big squirt bottle. So I can't really power wash and get a lot of water on there. Dog here. Okay. Got that all feathered out. You see that? You don't see any harsh squares of white. I, I guess you do, do see a little brush mark over here. Now, now that I did that, I have to go all the way across. Okay. 
Okay, so I blended it out, and now I'm gonna have just a center, the little sheen of white. And that's how that's done. Okay, well that's how easy it is. Color blending does not have to be bright, bold colors. It doesn't have to be uh, two very different contrasting colors to be, make it um, impactful. This is just a subtle change. You can tell, I mean, this used to be just a flat gray. It made it look flat. By adding just little hints of white, little hints of white or fluff here and there um, will give it some softness, it gives it some texture, gives it some character. Um, so I just wanted to show you that real quick, just because when I, when I showed this piece on my Facebook page, people had asked how I made it look so soft and asked if I was gonna do a tutorial. So I figured when I do this one, I'll record it. But that's all there is to it. You can see this one over here. See this one? You can see the, the lightness. It looks like light's hitting it. And then the doors being lighter. It just looks like light is hitting it. And then focusing on the center of the bottom, just in the middle. Because if you have light coming down, hitting your drawers, center, center, center. So I carried that same idea from top to bottom. But, and then I painted, like I said, painted the hardware silver with the Rust-Oleum. And I'm gonna put that piece of trim behind this one door to close that gap in, because this is definitely, to, uh, it's probably an Ikea set. <laughs> Got it at an auction, and, and I thought it'd be fun to play with. It was a laminate, and I was, I'm really getting into playing with that slick stick. And I wanted to do a demo video on the slick stick, which I used these doors for that demo on my live. Um, but, uh, so I thought I'd have fun with it. And like I said, the one way to cure, if you have a gap between your cabinets, get a piece of trim, and I'm gonna do this uh, tomorrow. I'm gonna put a piece of trim behind this door so that when this one shuts, it'll shut up against it and it'll fill that hole. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you when I'm done. I don't have those tightened on yet because I still have to put another coat of gator hide. So I'm gonna let this dry as soon as it's dry, um, as long as they look the same, because you can't really tell until it dries completely because right now it looks a little bit brown but it's going to lighten up once it's dried. But um, as soon as it's dried, I'll get a one coat of gator hide on it um, and then two coats on the top. I'll do one coat on the body, two coats on the top. I apply it with a sponge. I'll do the same to this. I'll get staged, get pictures, and get it all posted. So, okay, well this is Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and also um, Fashion Toppings, got them both. Oh, and also, I have an affiliate link with Dixie Belle, and so if you're interested in checking out any of these colors or any of these products from Dixie Belle, uh, the Dixie Belle paint, Dixie Belle uh, top coats, the Dixie Belle slick stick, which is amazing, um, brushes galore, just go ahead and uh, check out my affiliate link down below, and you can see what Dixie Belle is all about. So it's, right now, it's the only paint that I'm using. I'm just in love with it. I love how soft it is. It doesn't have that chalky look to it. It goes on so nice and smooth. Um, it's durable and um, tried a lot of paints and I love this stuff. So, okay, well, I'll let you go. See you later.